Are you local? Hey, sit down. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down the top ten moments from the TV series The League of Gentlemen. We'll, uh, we'll put all this information into the computer, and if we get a match, we'll we'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. Before we begin, if you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be focusing on the weirdest, wackiest, most hilarious and unsettling moments from the dark TV show. And don't worry, it's okay to laugh. Well, you say that, but you can't get a girlfriend, can you? <laughs> Number 10, the orange juice commercial. Auditions can be a nervous affair, so much so you can fluff your lines up or, well, shout them at the top of your lungs. Excuse me! This sketch has timid Pamela auditioning for Orange Juice commercial director Jed, and she is tasked with one easy line. Excuse me, have anybody got any buckle orange juice? <laughs> Unfortunately, the delivery is a little well. We watch as they simply reset and go for it again and again, as if it's just a slight mispronunciation. And Steve Pemberton's gleeful delivery is cool. That too happy? Do you get much work as an actress, Pamela? No. Number nine, burying Mike. It's never easy with Jeff, Brian, and Mike. They always end up arguing, and nine times out of ten, Jeff pulls a gun. But this sketch is all about burying Mike, who is supposedly dead after being mistakenly hit over the head. How are you going to explain that? It's a bit more than an hour's blade in it. Contemplating whether putting him in the ground is a good idea, and whether they should make him a cross. They talk about getting their story straight, blaming the whole incident on wolves. It happened in Australia, not to a fully grown man. But then Mike wakes up. Better go with the wolves story. <laughs> wolves in it! Number eight, Dean's home video. Lessons in close-up card magic. We're not sure what's worse, the homemade camcorder quality, Dean's glamorous stage voice, or the fact that he's just not very good at magic. Royston and Vasey's resident geeky street magician, Dean Tavalores, always has his video camera ready to capture his great tricks, and it's his program at his house that gets our vote. Wong King is buried in the basement. In this rather lengthy magic trick explanation, Dean showcases his interesting persona and ends up frustrated when his shouting mother keeps distracting him. Given the stress of it all, he ultimately ends up having a fit. Number seven, her lip meets Matthew. Well, oh, come all you faithful. Can also come in my face, full. That sounds like a real good treat. Mm. Pervy German teacher Herr Wolf Lip is one of those characters we probably shouldn't laugh at, but due to Pemberton's comical delivery, we can't help it. When exchange student Matthew meets Lip for the first time in church, we are bombarded with innuendos and, due to the language barrier, harmless slips of the tongue. Boys. <laughs> Some of the older ones can be quite a mouthful. If ever there was an award for double entendres, it'd go to this guy. Tomorrow, Lottie will finger your hymn on the organ, but uh, I wish to conduct you myself. Number six, go Johnny, go, 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 go. Ever felt left out from an inside joke or story when amongst friends? If so, you relate to this clip. Sitting down for a game of cards, these guys squabble over which game to play, mainly because Gatus's Dr. Simon hasn't heard of any of them. Not even Slippery Jack or 40 card drag. Come on, let's have a game of go, Johnny, go, 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 go. Fine idea, young man. Finally settling on the verbosely named go, Johnny, go, 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 we watch and listen as the rules are expertly explained. It's very simple. Jacks are worth 10, kings are worth 3. Apart from one eye, Jacks which are wild cards. Yeah, but we'll come to those in a minute. Did you write that down? A 3? He can't lead with a 3. This is go, Johnny, go, 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 not Babalama Fizzbad. Number 5, the special stuff. What's that caterpillar on your top lip? Has <laughs> your dad not told you how to shave yet? Although never explicitly stated, it's widely believed that the special stuff demon butcher Hilary Briss sells is in fact human meat, a source after delicacy in the town of Royston Vasey that causes nosebleeds. And this highly exclusive meat can't be obtained by just anyone, as we see in this scene. The atmosphere turns from chirpy to sour when a young schoolboy asks if he can get in on the special stuff, and Briss turns on his scary mutton chop stare. I reckon I'm ready for it. Do you now? Careful where you buy your meat from, people. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, house rules. Whilst he's staying with us, we want him to relax and, and treat this place just like his own home. Oh, of course, of course. Take your shoes off. <laughs> Everyone has house rules but I doubt anyone's are extensive as the Dentons. With their nephew Benjamin visiting, they go through the house and give him the lay of the land, and tell him of the strict rules that go with it. Firstly, 
the keys. Oh, right. <laughs> From the different colour-coded towels to their ones and twos toilet paper, it's more like something out of an OCD nightmare than a tour. Ben also gets a talk on, uh, masturbating. Hunched double on the sofa bed. <laughs> Pumping your fist. <laughs> Number three, Pauline gets replaced. Can I help you? <laughs> Who the frick are you? In at number three, it's Pauline, everyone's least favourite job seeker restart officer, who's always equipped with gruelling put downs and an abundance of pens. But after being fired for violent conduct, she is forced to take a seat in her own dole office and be belittled by Shearsmith's Kathy Carter Smith. She's worse than you. Right, we're going to have to. Although she tries to argue her case for the traditional pen over computers, it doesn't go to plan. Now get out of my sight and my restart before I shove your pens where the sun don't shine. <laughs> Number two, the new road. We're building a new road in your area. New road bad! <laughs> Some people just want to keep themselves to themselves, and locals Edward and Tubbs are two of them. They're a couple who will do anything, even kill people, to keep their shop and town pure of outsiders. When approached by non-local builders, they wince at the idea of a new road being built. They're strangers! Not local! He wears a crown and builds a new road! As always, the atmosphere seems to die down before it's suggested that a new road may result in their shop being flooded with customers. We are left to presume the worst for the two helpless workmen. Your shop will be full of people! <laughs> <laughs> Number one, hello Dave. Hello Dave. I'm sorry. Is that Dave? You think you've had a nuisance knocker? Get a load of this guy. Breezing into town with his pandemonium carnival, Papa Lazaro is the creepy circus proprietor of your nightmares. Barging into a woman's house and insisting on calling her Dave, his end game is to steal the woman and add her to his growing collection of wives. Dave, my wife tells me there is a block in your toilet. No, there isn't. There is now. The creepy voice, his peg collection, his made-up language, it's dark, sinister comedy gold. Oh, you're my wife now. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.